Welcome to the People's Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of September 30th, 2020. Well, Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin said that he has he's going to release some information about the White House's uh, counteroffer to the Democrats' $2.2 trillion Heroes Act 2.0. In fact, here's a clip. What's going to happen in terms of another financial aid package? We've got millions of Americans who are out of work, We've got businesses small and large that are in crisis at this point through no fault of their own. Will we see another uh, financial package to aid them before Election Day? Well, the president and I are working hard on a bipartisan proposal. Uh, I spoke to Speaker Pelosi several times over the weekend. We had a conversation for about an hour yesterday uh, going through different aspects of it and uh, I expect we're, I will come back with her later this afternoon and we'll deliver a response so I think we'll have a, a very reasonable response something that's very similar to what has been the bipartisan proposal that the problem solvers has worked on and I hope we can get something done and as you heard from Mnuchin his reply was their offer will be something like the March of the Marshall Common Grounds Act, which is a $1.5 trillion act with an automatic trigger of the people getting a third stimulus check in March of 2021 if the COVID-19 conditions worsen or do not improve. Isn't that very nice? Um, but they said that he's also said that their act will include a second stimulus check. Oh, wait. The, sorry, it's, it's the Marshall Common Grounds Act. Like I said, I mean, a little recap for that one. Uh, the Marshall Common Grounds Act included a second stimulus check, a second round of paycheck protection money, and more enhanced unemployment, as well as other very good benefits. And it has an automatic booster clause in it to increase the coronavirus, the, the stimulus package's cost from $1.5 to $2 trillion. Like I said, that would be that clause would be if the COVID 19 cases got worse, we'd get an automatic. Uh, $1,200 stimulus check in March of 2021. But as it sits, I mean, they're basically uh, sitting on $1.5 trillion for um, the Problem Solvers Caucus. They're also sitting on $2.2 trillion from Democrats' Heroes Act 2. I believe $900 billion from the Heels Act from the Republicans. And as far as the White House's act we have no idea what that is yet what it's called at least but it does that is going to probably match around the 1.5 to 2 million dollar range as well and in fact here's a clip to better explain it for you guys if you do reach an agreement with Speaker Pelosi, you still have the Republicans in the Senate who have been pushing back and who the demands that they put forth, the things that they'd like to see uh, is a much skinnier package than I, I think the administration and the White House has kind of put forth. They're looking to spend less than nine hundred billion dollars. How would you bring those Senate Republicans on board? And have you spoken to any of them? Uh, Mark Meadows and I spoke to both Kevin and Mitch McConnell yesterday. We went through with them, what our thoughts are, and uh, you know, let, let's let's see if we can get a compromise agreement with the speaker, something that works, uh, and then we'll continue to work with uh, both sides to work on all the exact language and the policies. And then Mnuchin was actually asked about what details would be in the Republicans' offer. In fact, here's a clip for you to explain that one too idea of the scope of, of, of what is there in the middle ground. I mean, I, I think I can guess at some of these things, what, what's targeted, what seems to have bipartisan support. And I would throw out things like um, extending unemployment ex to some extent uh, and, and raising that number, maybe extending some money for small businesses, potentially the airlines, making sure that this is targeted information. But can you give us any scope about the things that you've been discussing that you think are likely and that there is common ground? Well, first, let me say uh, all the issues that we, we worked with the Senate on on the trillion dollar deal are in there. Uh, in, in many cases, uh, we actually have an agreement between the Republicans and the Democrats on what we want to do. Uh, but in certain cases, the issue is really about the size and scope of how much we want to do. So there, there are certain policies where we do have differences, but there's a lot of commonality. Things like the PPP has enormous bipartisan support. Uh, money for schools has enormous bipartisan support. 
Uh, we have additional direct payments, economic impact payments, which has support on both sides. We have back to work credits. We have retention credits. So I think there's there's many areas. Uh, you mentioned the airlines. We do support more money for the airlines. That's something that's critical to keep our airline workers uh, together. And as you saw, Mnuchin, Mnuchin rattle off some information, including second sentence checks. In fact, here is a clip for that one, too. And that was Mnuchin's perspective this morning. Now let's see where Pelosi sits. She had a call with her Democratic caucus this morning. She was caught saying that Pelosi is, she was caught saying that she is stressing about <coughs> they're getting close to the inauguration of Biden, assuming he actually wins the presidential election. She continued on to say, we will have our moment. Unfortunately, I don't know what moment she's talking about. Maybe she's thinking that uh, the Democrats will win the presidency and they'll have the House and the presidency and hopefully they can win the Senate. We do not know yet. That information is in Pelosi's mind and not relevant, not available at this present time. <laughs> and then, let's see here. Pelosi also said that the outstanding issues with Mnuchin are the state and local funding and liability protection. That liability protection has been an issue for the Democrats for a very long time because they do not believe that giving the medical professionals as well as businesses and schools protection from being sued from COVID is legitimate when in fact, if they were smart, they would actually give liability protection to everyone making it so no one can sue no one for COVID-19 related illnesses. This way we didn't have to worry about anything for COVID wise because they, if I remember correctly from earlier episodes I've reported on about this liability protection, they actually said it wouldn't cost anything to give it to them. So give it to everybody if it doesn't cost nothing. This way you, they can't sue nobody. It just makes it easier that way, don't you think? And in fact, what do you think on the liability protection? Because I would like to know your ideas and your thoughts on that. Should it just be available for the medical professionals and businesses? Or should it be available for every American resident in the United States? Please leave your comments on that one below and we'll see what we have to hear, have to hear and say. And that COVID-19 cases are on the, on the increase in the United States basically, of course. That's why I think liability protection should be available for everyone because as we're coming into our second wave of COVID-19, because Europe's already experienced theirs and still is, Canada is also experiencing theirs as well, which means it's going to come to us. So we're going to have our second wave. So if they give liability protection to every American in the United States, so you can't sue no one over COVID-19 related illnesses or anything like that, it'll save a lot of time and trouble. This makes it so much easier. And as a final reminder, there the Senate has until midnight tonight to vote on the new government funding bill or there will be a government shutdown. And plus, for those that are actually still in the proper time zone, today is also the day <clears throat> to file to get the uh, money for your dependents that because the IRS made a few mistakes, let's say about nine million mistakes, and they didn't give everyone their correct amount of money for the dependents or they didn't actually file taxes for 2018-2019. So to do that you go to the IRS website and you use the, um, the non-filer tool and you go in there and that's how you claim your money for any dependents that you have that you haven't got money for from the first stimulus package. And I believe you have until midnight to get that done as well. And then, no wait, I think you have until yeah, I think you have to midnight. I know there's a, another one out there um, that expires on October 15th for, for, I believe, the exact same uh, procedures going to the IRS website using a non file tool as well. I can't remember exactly what one that was called. I do apologize for that. It's, it's been sort of a long day for me after all. But I got to give my viewers 
the information that they need to help them push forward and survive so we can all stay alive in this together and watch President Trump be debunked as president. Wouldn't that be nice? I think that'd be awesome to watch Joe Biden win and President Trump contend, contest as well as go to the Supreme Court to say how he won. Because this is how it works as far as the presidency goes. I explained this earlier in another episode. We have, we have the vote and we have the electoral college. And here's how it works. Our votes sort of help out a bit, but not a whole lot. Because when it comes right down to it, it goes to electoral college. And the electoral college, I think they said, has 258 electorates. And each state has a certain electorates as well. I mean, and the other one I gave you the example of California, which I'll use in this one as well. And the example of California is California has a total of 52 House seats in the Senate as well as three independents, which would give them a grand total of 55 electorates in the college. I don't know how many uh, electorates Utah has. I mean, I know Mitt Romney, which sort of thought the whole um, debate yesterday was a joke because Trump wouldn't shut up and he kept interrupting Biden. And yes, of course, Biden had to call a few names back as well. But compared to all the, all the spew Trump was talking, Biden had his space. So that's all good. But like I said, I mean, the vote isn't really up to the popular vote. It's more up to the electorates and the electoral college and how they choose. In fact, I think we should actually get rid of the electoral college altogether because it's a joke. We should actually be able to do it by popular vote because that's how it should be done in the first place. The people, because last election between Hillary Clinton and uh, Donald Trump, if everyone remembers correctly, Donald Trump may have won, but that's because he won the electoral college. He had more electorates voting for him than the other way around. But if it would have gone by the most popular vote, Hillary Clinton would have been the president because she had more more votes than Donald Trump. And I'm thinking that's what's going to happen this time as well. Biden supposedly has more votes than Trump does. I think it was like a double digit percentage compared to Trump. But when it comes right down to it, it's really up to the Electoral College to actually vote the next person in. And if that can't happen, and then, well, <laughs> Then it goes to, I think, uh, House of Representatives to choose the next president. Which means if, the, if that happens, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, as well as other Democrats and Republicans in the House could choose the next president that sits on the bench. Just it sits in the Oval Office. There yet. But I am actually going to end my broadcast for now, so I don't ramble on and bore you guys. That's one thing I do not wish to do. And uh, so for now, you guys have a magnificent day, an excellent evening. Please stay safe out there and always remember, we're in this together. You have a great night.